essential training series for architects. Hello, and welcome to our first tutorial in the Architectures course. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the sun and sky system in SimLab Composer. What we have here is a scene with materials applied to it. It is a simple scene that allows us to demonstrate the capabilities of the lighting system in SimLab Composer. Let us go to Rendering Workbench. Environment. The click on Sun. The checkbox named Enable Sun, once clicked, will activate the sun and sky lighting in your scene. Under Sun Direction, you can see two sliders. The first slider controls the elevation of the sun, at zero degrees. The sun will be at the lowest point in the horizon, simulating a sunrise or a sunset. And at 90 degrees, the sun will be highest in the sky, simulating noon. The second slider controls the horizontal position of the sun, revolving it in a 360 degrees orbit around the center, which in this case is your scene. If we click on the sun rotation icon, a visual controller will appear where you can adjust the position of the sun manually and without reverting to the use of angles. Adjust it by moving the dragger. Once you are done, click on the green mark to apply the changes. Let us press F4 on the keyboard to start the real-time rendering and be able to see the result. As you can see, the direction of the shadow goes precisely with the sun angle we set. Let us drop the elevation to a low angle. Press F4 and notice how the overall environment and shadow's behavior is simulating a sunset. Let us set the sun direction in a way that enhances the look in our scene. The angle of the light looks good, and it goes through the interior part of our scene. Another useful attribute that we can control here is the albedo, which is simply put, a reflection coefficient of the Earth and the Earth's atmosphere. The albedo is applicable by using it as a color tinting factor in your scene. You can add a mood to your scene by either changing its color or its value. You can mimic a sunset or a sandstorm, perhaps even a crescent moon. Let us set it back to white for now. Turbidity controls the amount of dust and particles in the atmosphere. A low value means clear weather, and a higher value means dusty or sandy weather. This translates to the refraction of light in the atmosphere, where if we have a low value of turbidity, we will get sharp, defined shadows, whereas having high turbidity values will produce soft fading shadows. Let me zoom into an area so you could see the effect clearly. I am going to set it to 3, which gives an in-between result, where you can see a clear shape of the shadow, but it is still soft on the edges. Sky strength controls the amount of light emitted from the sky from all directions, which serves as an ambient light for the whole scene regardless of the direction of the sun. I am going to set the sun strength to zero, so you can see the effect of the skylight only. As you can see, it looks like a cloudy day, 
where you will not get vivid shadows. Sun strength obviously increases the strength of light coming from the sun. The last option in the sun and sky system is toggling the render solar disk on or off. I am going to adjust my camera towards the sun and drop the sky strength so you can get a better look at the sun disk. I am now going to talk about a helpful trick that I use to better adjust the lights in my scene. If you go to the Render tab and click on Clay, it will activate the real-time clay mode. Composer is now showing you the scene without utilizing scene materials. This eliminates the effect of material light absorption, any color or textures, and any reflection values. This gives you a better understanding of how your light sources are affecting the scene. You can now adjust the sun's direction and strength without having to worry about scene materials. Click on clay again to go back to your regular renderer with all the materials assigned to the scene.